This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 23 on the 21st of August 2013, an interview with Tom Allen, founder of Metable. And the DMT One to One Show this week is sponsored by Sheridans at sheridans.co.uk. It's great to be here on the DMT One to One Show with uh, Tom Allen, founder of uh, Metable. So hi, hi, Tom, and how's it going today? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad yourself. Great, thank you. It's, uh, it's all going well. And so, uh, Metable is a very new uh, service that you, uh, that you uh, founded. And so, tell me all about it. What does Metable do? So, Metable is a um, metadata and asset management platform, basically, for rights holders in the music industry. So, um, whether that be labels, management, publishers, um, it's basically a cloud based service for them to store the metadata, associated assets. Um, anything they want basically to take yeah. what they're doing on hard drives and move it into the cloud. Um, and, uh, and let's take that uh, into like a more practical realm. So uh, yeah. w- when did you get the idea to start uh, Metable and, and, and why did that come up? So I was working at uh, Essential, uh, the distributor, yeah. for some years and we were, you know, we'd take on lots of new labels, some were very organized and then, you know, in the worst case scenarios, they uh, some were not very organized at all, uh, <laughs> sure. to put it kindly. Uh, you know, would, you know, you'd ask for their digital catalog and it would be a, a box of CDs and Googling for pack shots, which, uh, you know, in <laughs> digital has been around long enough now, but yeah. you know, really people should, you know, understand that they need to look after this stuff. Yeah. So, you know, after the fourth or fifth time that happened, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was like, hang on, there's, you know, Labels really aren't looking after this. Yeah. Um, as I say, you know, some are very good, but you know, I think across the board there are, you know, some big hefty labels who don't understand the value in storing this stuff properly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was kind of where it started. You know, just as a case of right, you know, do it once, do it properly. Um, yeah. You know, look after it on your end because whenever you're asked to enter it in for anybody else. You're into, into their systems for their uses, whether that be your distributor, PPL, that's right, whoever it may be. Um, and so that's that's a great way for them to actually keep the IP as well on their metadata, and they have it in one place that is is their own data. You know, you exactly, and they exactly. can download it, share it, and if the company is sold or acquired by somebody else, then you can go. There you go. Here is a very clean set of metadata, and it, and it kind of it can actually increase the value of a company. Uh, yeah, sense. I absolutely think yeah. so. You know, I think, um, you know, in, in terms of, as you say, if somebody's selling a catalog or, you know, even licensing part of it to somebody, yeah. if they can give it to them in a format that they can actually use and, you know, take that and do whatever they need to do with it. And I think that's, you know, the value in that is, um, is huge. Absolutely. But, you know, today, we're no longer just selling CDs and physical, we're obviously moved into digital, but, you know, there's lots of other rights going on around that as well, whether it be, you know, Merlin settlements, whether it be, you know, PPL, neighboring rights stuff, um, yeah. any license side of things you may do. Um, you know, the income streams of, you know, it's no longer just about sales, it's about how you use that copyright, basically. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And so um, from uh, Metable, uh, you can take it pretty much anywhere. So, you know, the, the, the idea is that you can use it for, uh, distributors, you can use it for the PPL and neighbor rights uh, collection, you can use it for YouTube or SoundCloud uh, yeah. and all sorts of different services. And so uh, from, from Metable to the services, uh, what, what's the link? How, how, how does that work? So it's um, like any other delivery platform at the end of the day on that side of things. Um, sure. You know, it's with your DSPs and most of your distributors, it's going to be um, an XML feed, um, yeah. whether it be API. The eyeballs of likes of SoundCloud or YouTube. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, we're not integrated with everyone at the moment, but we're you, we're working with you know lots of different partners to try and make this as easy as possible sure. for the holders, basically. And looking at practical examples of because uh, uh, I know you've been better testing this service for for a little while now. So yes. so w- w- what has been the real life uh, uh, application of the service so far? Um, so I think Fat Cat's a good example. Yeah. Um, who have. Uh, Obviously, Brighton-based label in the UK, but they have New York office as well. So we've taken their catalogue, digitised everything. They have been through the pain, actually, quite recently a few times of not having their catalogue in order. They had changed distribution a couple of times. 
uh, obviously had asked their distributor for their content back. They they got it back, but you know, in an XML format that nobody wanted, um, or you know, the other party didn't want. So they had to rebuild it. Um, and so, you know, they, they knew the pain, they knew why they needed this basically. So in terms of Fat Cat, what we done with them is we've digitized their whole back catalog. We have um, integrated with their distribution, working on integrating with PPL at the moment, um, integrated with their DTC yeah. um, on both sides of the pond, um, and looking at their um, accounting package as well at the moment with them. So, you know, it basically should replace label copy for them. Yeah. That's at the end of the day. Exactly. Um, so, you know, they get new tracks in from artists, sign up new artists, can set their deals up in Metable, set every, set all the releases up and be able to then basically the click of a button, say, right, that goes through, you know, to all our different channels, like the distributors, D2C, et cetera. Yeah. Um, you know, it gives them good data integrity. So what's gone out to the distributors when it comes back in and goes into their accounting package, that data is exactly the same. It's yeah. not, you know, the data entry hasn't happened on numerous occasions across all these different, um, all these different platforms. Um, so it should clean up a lot of that kind of, you know, in royalty accounting side of things, that backwards and forwards of things being slightly different. Yeah. <laughs> the rose on the beginning, not et cetera, et cetera. But, um, I've done my fair share of so um, yeah, and that's also true of um, for audio files because I mean I, I've come across uh, uh, while I was working in digital distribution, uh, you know the, the a number of occasions where. Uh, because a file wasn't stored in, in one particular place, you had several different, different versions of the same track that maybe were one or two seconds out. Uh, sometimes that ended up generating different SRCs and then it became really dif difficult to track the track itself if, if people were making mistakes in, in ingesting it and they were assigning a new SRC to the track. So, so having that all stored there, you store all, actually the audio as well in there so you yes. can deliver that alongside the metadata and that makes it a lot easier to have a, a globalized uh, sort of viewpoint of, of of your of your assets and, and what you're actually getting out there exactly you know i mean you think about you know any medium-sized label there's probably 10 different people who touch that products whether it be you know your product manager or your digital guys or your international guys distributing to their people um you know etc cetera, etc cetera. and you know the amount of you send it links that must be flying around the world for any given yeah you know, or media fire is always my favourite. You know, <laughs> the, the service people use to pirate your music. Yeah, you can use that to send it around the world. Um, <laughs> the amount of, of those links that are everywhere, you know, different metadata sheets that all these different people are, are making. What we're trying to do is just to bring that all together, get everyone singing from the same sheet. Yeah, have somebody not have your intern or whoever dealing with your metadata, but have someone who understands what that data means, you know, how that affects the whole picture, get them to do it right, do it once, and then let everyone think from the same sheet, basically. That's great. And so uh, talking about metadata, you know, we're talking about the fact that it's not a particularly sexy subject uh, when we're doing the prep for, for the interview, but uh, it's a very important one. And so, what, you know, what, what are the ways in which you can increase the exposure of the metadata problem uh, within the music industry community? So we're actually putting an event on. Um, right, great. On the 3rd of October. Um, which we, we're looking at, again, as you say, not the sexiest subject in the world. So what we're trying to do is look at uh, look at it in the wider business, basically. So yeah. to think about um, you know, what good metadata means to a service, how they're, how they're using that metadata. If you think about something like Spotify, for instance, you know, we know that they get data feeds in from all the different people. Yeah. They find tracks. Where do they get the related artist information from, where do they get the review side of things from, um, all of those types of things. Um, but, you know, with, uh, we have PPL who are going to talk at this event, you know, how do they use their data in terms of, you know, neighboring rights side of things, what, what does good data mean to them, how much easier does it make their job. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're trying to look at the, the wider picture, avoid talking about what a title is, but, you know, just kind of focus on how, 
you know, good data can actually really benefit your business in terms of whether it be plays or, you know, at the end of the day, income and exposure, really. Sounds great. And if, uh, if anybody listening wanted to try out the product or get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, so they can come to the website, which is metable.co, um, or they can get in touch with me at tom.allen, which is A-L-L-E-N, yeah. uh, at metable.co. Great. Awesome. Basically. Yeah, very keen to hear from um, any any labels, managers, um, you know, in terms of at this stage, you know, as you said, it's kind of been beta for a while. We're still working very closely with people trying to understand their business, understand, um, you know, I, I know the digital side very well, but it's interesting to hear from a sync person how, how yeah. they want to structure it, how they may need tags that they can filter on. Um, you know, all of those different kind of aspects. And also looking at international, of course, like uh, I'm sure the requirements of a, a US label would be different than those of a UK label in terms of yeah. delivery platforms as well. So that's going to be quite an interesting challenge in the coming yeah, months. absolutely. You know, it's um, it's a step at a time, isn't it? You know, if we, if, uh, you know as, we, as we work with labels, work out who their partners are, how they're, you know, how they're currently doing things. Yeah. And, and just, you know, just platform at a time, just pick them up, solve people's problems, basically. That's great. Well, uh, thanks so much for your time. And uh, yeah, again, it's uh, metable.co. Uh, and uh, thanks, Tom. I, I, hope, um, I hope it all goes well and look forward to hearing, you from, hearing from you in a few months' time. Great. Thanks a lot. And thanks for listening. And now a word from Sheridan's, this week's sponsor of the one-to-one -one show at sheridan's.co.uk. I'm here with Tahir Bashir from uh, Sheridan's and we're going to talk about uh, lawyers and artists today. So what is a law firm's role in an artist's career? Well, uh, l lawyers in, in the music industry are different to lawyers in other industries because uh, typically lawyers in the music industry tend to get more involved in the career of the, of the talent, whereas lawyers in other industries are they're effectively looking at problems and contracts. Yeah. So uh, in the music industry, lawyers act as not just legal uh, advisors, but also yeah. as business consultants, effectively. Yeah, sure. And so in a way, the, the work of a lawyer complements that of a manager. And if so, in, in, in what way? We work very closely with managers where an artist has a manager, so uh, typically the manager will be talking about a particular deal or look for, for, for deals and then will consult with the lawyer as to the deal terms and then the lawyer helps execute the deal with the manager. In some cases we have more of a uh, wider angle and uh, understanding of deals because we do so many for different artists, whereas a manager looks after one artist. So that, that helps managers. Yeah. Uh, and in other cases, some, some artists don't have managers. So in, in those scenarios, the lawyers act uh, as pseudo managers as well. Yeah, sure. And looking at uh, the relationship with labels as well, uh, do you provide contacts with labels too if artists come to you? Yeah, I mean, realistically, you know, we we don't go out and uh, sh shop deals as much as managers do because yeah. that's their job. Having said that, um, we uh, have very close relationships with labels. Um, you know, they get to know you very well because they do so many deals with you. Uh, they look to you to close deals so that, so, so that you have a, a different uh, role in their eyes. And quite often, if they know that you're, you know, you act for various artists and we act for probably more artists here at Sheridan's than you know, any other law firm in the UK, they know that you've got good quality artists on your books, so they, they're looking to build business as well. So um, quite often we're used as a filtering process for, for new artists. Sure. And finally, a question that is, uh, I think, in everybody's mind in terms of uh, emerging artists. When uh, is the right time to go and speak to a law firm or to a lawyer? Yeah, uh, I mean, as an emerging artist, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your music is as good as it can be. It's, it's all about the creativity. Uh, there comes a time when you need to speak to a lawyer, uh, and that time can vary for different artists. Obviously, the best time is if you've got a deal in place, because at that point, you do need someone to advise you around that. Sometimes with some artists, they need a bit of guidance as to how to go approach things. And so, you know, I do speak to artists earlier, um, you know, and in, with some artists' case, you know, very early. Um, but ultimately, it will be at the point that they've got something in place where they want to, you know, sign up to something. That's great. Thank you very much. And until next week. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrends.com.